All right, thank you, Todd. Well, tonight, the acting U.S. Capitol Police Chief is apologizing to members of Congress for failing to take adequate steps to prevent the deadly violence at the Capitol back on January 6th. Chief Yogananda, Yogananda rather, Pittman called it a terrorist attack and admits they knew about the threat and should have done more to stop it. Congresswoman Jennifer Wexton was at the briefing at the Capitol with those uh, Capitol security leaders. Thank you for joining us tonight. Let's get right to it. Chief Pittman apologizing here, saying they knew there was a strong potential for violence and that Congress was the target. So knowing that they understood the threat here, they were prepared or said they were and still failed. What do you make of that? Well, I'm glad that she apologized and, and she doesn't just owe an apology to the members and to the staff. She owes an apology to the Capitol Police who were left under-resourced and, and unprepared for the gravity of the threat that was facing them. But it is very disturbing that they were aware of the, this threat and still did not take, take positive actions to get the backup that they very sorely needed. Yeah, so we have this apology from Chief Pittman there admitting failure. And I think we all knew well before today's apology that, yeah, there was a failure here with U.S. Capitol Police and a number of federal agencies. Um, what did you learn from this hearing today that you didn't know before walking in? Well, I didn't know the entire timeline of the request for help from the from the National Guard and that and that the the previous chief had, had sought help from the National Guard, but was was overruled by the sergeants at arms of the House and the Senate, neither of whom are still employed in that capacity. But that's one of the things that's very concerning because whoever is on the ground and closest to the, the threat and best able to assess it should be the one who gets to make those decisions. So looking at how the police board manages the Capitol Police is something we're going to have to do going forward. Now, if you can, Congresswoman, wh where were you on that day? What do you remember most about it? Walk us through what it was like being in there. It was really sort of surreal because everything happened so quickly. Um, remember that, that, that there were pipe bombs located in a, in a location very close to one of our house office buildings. So they, they evacuated Cannon House office building and everybody's official devices started going crazy with all kinds of alarms and, and really shrill sounds. And so, you know, then we also got the shelter in place order and everything and, and people started breaking through the barriers. Uh, they hadn't yet breached the Capitol, but it was pretty clear that things were going badly very quickly and that the Capitol Police were not prepared to, to, to stop the threat that they were facing and the violence that ultimately came. So it was, it was a very harrowing day and very surreal especially as we were hearing about the request for National Guard assistance that it was initially denied. And that was obviously very concerning. And thank goodness that the Metropolitan Police came to the rescue, as did the state troopers from Maryland and Virginia, as well as the Virginia National Guard and some others that came to help us out in our time of need. Yeah. Now, how did you feel leading up to that day, understanding that, yeah, this threat was out there? I think a lot of us heard that there was the potential for violence on that day. So uh, what were some of your thoughts heading into the day? Well, I thought that they'd be better prepared, frankly, because we knew that there were, you know, white supremacists, right wing militia groups, um, neo Nazis who are going to descend on the Capitol and try to wreak chaos and, and do whatever, take whatever measures they needed to, to to stop us from exercising our constitutional duty to certify the election. So, you know, so I was very, very surprised that that when I arrived at the Capitol and it seemed like a like a pretty normal day, you know, there didn't seem to be a lot of reinforcements. Uh, didn't seem like there was a big threat assessment or threat level, and uh, that seemed very strange to me. And it soon became clear that they were completely unprepared for the gravity of the danger that awaited them. Yeah, we have roughly a minute left, uh, Congresswoman Wexton, and uh, this is critical. What happens from here? You know, this is the people's house. It's an open campus. People can express their First Amendment right to free speech right there at the steps of the Capitol. But now you do have the, the fencing up um, and you have more guards stationed around the Capitol. So should access be restricted for a lengthy period of time or are we going to go back to normal? Well, we have to find the right balance between hardening the Capitol and, and still making sure that it's accessible to the people because that's one of the things that's so wonderful about it. I love walking over to votes and seeing people walking their dogs or, or strolling with their baby strollers on the Capitol grounds. And with the giant no scale fences and, and everything all enclosed as it's been for the past couple of weeks, I mean, that's not sustainable and we shouldn't, we shouldn't have to live like that. But we need to make sure that we have a flexible response that responds to the dangers as, as we are seeing them. So 
for something like the impeachment trial, we're going to need more, more response and more protection. But on an average day, I hope that we will get back to something approaching the, the normal that we were accustomed to. Hopefully there won't be a next time. Congresswoman Jennifer Wexton, thank you for your time tonight.